Hi, Tim Hunker here, and in this video, we're going to create a worksheet using Python and org mode in Emacs, and then we're going to uh, export the worksheet to HTML, but we're going to style it with Bootstrap. Uh, I may mess around and even style it with um, Bulma or Materialize also, uh, just to show you a few different ways to do it. And then we're going to change that to a PDF that's styled with one of those um, styling frameworks. Okay, so, and this will be helpful for anyone who wants to create, well, math worksheets first, um, but also for people who want to do a blog and want to do it in org mode and want to get a style sheet from like Bootstrap or something like that or create their own style sheet. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it in org mode. Uh, the documentation, as I was looking up how to do this, is not. Um, that great. Uh, so, um, you know, this may be helpful to some people. So uh, first thing, let's open up Emacs. Uh, I'm going with the light theme today. This is material light in case you're interested. I know some people have asked me about like, what theme are you using? This is material light. Okay. Uh, anyways, we'll go to Dear Ed here. And let's see if I have a Python math. I do. Okay. And let's call this, um, let's create another folder. Let's call this evaluate expressions. And um, all right, let's uh, just create that folder. And let's create a file and we'll call that evaluate uh, underscore expressions dot pi. You don't need to have an underscore, but that's kind of, I'm keeping in, in line with uh, some Python styling. Um, let's do, let's get this a little larger for you. All right. We're going to create a class called evaluate uh, expression. Okay. And we're going to instantiate the class and uh, we'll pass in the self. And, and then we're going to have to pass in a few different things. So in this worksheet, I'm going to have four different types of problems, and I'm going to have those randomly selected. So uh, I'm going to have four different coefficients I need. And then since we're going to do two variables, I'm going to need an x value and a y value. OK, so I'm going to do coefficient underscore one, coefficient underscore two, coefficient underscore three, coefficient underscore four, x underscore value, and y underscore value. OK, and then let's do colon. OK, and um, I'm going to say self dot coefficient underscore one equals coefficient underscore one. Now I have to do this four times. So I'm going to hit uh, control and space to set a mark and then control A to go to the start of the line. Uh, Alt W to um, copy the line. Whoops, what did I do? Uh, let's control K to kill that line and then go here and go back here. Let's see if it actually did this. No, it did not. Okay. So hold on. Control space. Control and ah, uh, there we go. Okay, uh, Alt W. Okay, go back here. Control Y. Now I would just you know change the numbers here. Okay. Um, okay. Again, change the numbers. And I, I should be doing my more efficient key movements of Alt V to go back. Uh, let's get that white space out of there. Uh, control A to go to the starter line, control Y to paste. Okay. All right. Just talking about what I'm doing just to kind of give you some idea of some Emacs formatting. Uh, let's see here. Okay. No white space. All right. Um, let's go over here and we'll say self dot X underscore value equals X underscore value self dot Y underscore value equals Y underscore value. OK, and that's us instantiating the uh, uh, class. OK, I haven't had caffeine yet. Um, all right. So let's also create a well, we're going to create, remember, four types of problems. So um, we're going to have a solution for type one. OK, and we'll pass in the self and we'll say 
st1. That'll be a variable. Uh, it's not named that great, but whatever. Uh, so that's going to be like 3x plus 4y. You want to evaluate what that expression is. So we're going to do self.coefficient1 times self.coefficient, uh, no, times self.x value uh, plus self dot coefficient two uh, times self dot y underscore value. Okay. And then we're going to return this uh, st1 variable. Okay. So that's the uh, finding the solution for a type one type problem. All right. Now we'll do uh, a type two. Okay. And we'll pass in the self again. Now type two is going to be something like four thirds x plus y. Okay, so coefficient 1 divided by coefficient 2 times x value plus y value. All right, so let's just call this st2. Uh, that's going to equal self dot, well, let's put this in parentheses, self dot coefficient uh, underscore 1 uh, divided by self dot coefficient underscore uh, 2 uh, times x underscore value plus y underscore oh oops no we need the self sorry self dot x underscore value plus uh self dot y underscore value okay let's return now this s uh t2 okay all right uh so that's two types of problems. The third type of problem would be something like x plus 4 thirds y, okay? So this is going to be a uh, sol type, let's call it 3, okay? And we'll pass in the self, and we'll say st3 is equal to uh, self dot x underscore value plus... Um, then we're going to have self dot coef... coef underscore one divided by self dot coef underscore two uh, move this up times self dot y underscore value okay and then we'll return uh, this one Okay, and then finally type four is going to be like four thirds x plus three halves y. Now these these values will all be randomly picked, of course, um, but you know we'll um, we'll we'll pick the random numbers in a moment. Okay, so we're going to have s. Uh, let's call this four. Okay, so this is going to be in parentheses self dot coefficient underscore one divided by self dot coefficient underscore two. Okay, uh, times um, self dot x underscore value plus self dot coefficient underscore uh, let's do three here uh, divided by self self dot coefficient uh, underscore four okay times self dot y underscore value okay and then we're going to return uh, this st four okay all right and that's going to be our class okay so i'm going to save this at this point so i just did control x control s on emacs to save now i want to go back to the top of the document so i'm going to do alt shift and then uh basically a comma which gives me that back arrow so alt shift back arrow um and then i'm going to import random that's a module uh and now i'm going to do alt shift period, which is going to give me the uh, basically alt forward arrow. Uh, and I'm going to go down here and now create an empty random number list. If you watch my videos re recently, you'll see I use this method quite often to create my worksheets. And now I want to populate the list with values. And I want negative values and positive values, but I don't want zero. So let's say uh, 4x in range, let's go from negative 100 
to 101. That'll give me negative 100 to 100. And you have to do one number above on the top end. Uh, we're going to take this random number list and we're going to append the x value. Okay, so that's going to make the list have numbers negative 100 through 100, including zero. But we don't want to have zero as one of our coefficient or as uh, the y value or the x value. Um, all right, so there's a way around that. All right, so we're going to now start. Uh, actually, let's create the org files that we want to append this to. So we're going to have an evaluate uh, underscore expressions uh, underscore file, and that's going to equal open. And then we'll do evaluate dash expressions dot org. And we're going to append to that file. And then we'll have an evaluate uh, expressions, let's call this a solution file, and we're going to take the evaluate expressions, we're going to append this to evaluate expressions solutions.org, okay, and append it, okay, so now we've got those files we can write to, so now let's start creating some problems, so I'm going to say for problem in range, uh, and we're going to start and do 100 problems, so 1 to 101, Okay, um, and we're first going to come up with the uh, coefficient. So I'm going to say coefficient underscore one equals random dot choice. That's why I imported that random module. And then we'll pass in the random number list. Okay, I'm going to do control space and control A to get to the beginning of this. Uh, Alt W to copy, control E to go to the end, uh, control A to go to the beginning here, and control Y. Um, do that a few times, and now let's just change our numbers over here. Um, so to uh, it's autocomplete. Sometimes it gets a little bit in the way. Let me escape out of there. And four. Okay. All right. Um, we're also going to have the x value equal a random that choice, uh, the random number list, and also the y value equal to random uh, dot choice of the random number list. Okay, uh, so that's all cool and good, but again, we don't want zero. So um, we're going to run these choices again. So we're going to say while, we'll do a while loop here, and this might add a little time to the program, but you know, it runs really fast anyways. So we'll say y coef one double equals zero or coef underscore two double equals zero or coef underscore three double equals zero or coef underscore four double equals zero. This is a little bit of a long line or x underscore value double equals zero or y underscore value double equals oops, double equals zero okay now what we're going to do is let's go up here go to the end of this line set a mark control space and let's go up and to the beginning of this line alt w copy that and let's go over no, let's uh, just paste it in, and then we've got a format. we got to make sure this is indented, so Control-Alt to um, mark it, Control-A, and let's just hit Tab. All right, so move that over. All good. All right, so I'm just trying to give you some Emacs shortcuts as I do this. Um, you know, with Emacs and Vim, it's part of the advantage is they're keyboard-driven, um, and, you know, people, like, have some things about Emacs, keyboard shortcuts, but they are pretty good. Um, so I, I like them. Um, anyways, so, and that, and that saves your wrists from the, the mouse and all that. Uh, okay, so now we've made sure that we're not um, having zero, okay? All right, so now we also want to go up a little bit. So let's do Alt-V to go up a little bit. And let's actually create a um, choice or, or type problem list. 
you can call it whatever you want. And I'm just going to have the values one, two, three, and four in there. Okay. And then I'm going to do alt shift com. Nope. Alt shift uh, period to move to the end here and tab in just one. Uh, cause we're out of the while loop now. And, um, what I want to do is pick a uh, type of problem. Um, and we can also create a problem. So let's just create the problem, uh, which will be an object. So new problem equals, uh, that's going to be an evaluate expression. We're going to pass in coefficient one, coefficient two, coefficient three, coefficient uh, four, um, the X value and the Y value. Okay, so that's going to be our new problem. Um, and uh, then we're going to have to pick the type of the problem. So let's say type of problem is going to equal random the choice. And then uh, the, I think it's the type. What did, I, what did I come up with here? So I had uh, type problem list. Okay, so what we got to put in here. So type problem list. Okay. All right. So that's going to give us a value one, two, three, or four. All right. So now we're going to have to have some if and elif statements. So we're going to say, uh, let's space it down. If type uh, of problem, if that equals one, well, then we want to write a certain thing. So we're going to, let me go up a little bit. Um, we've got this evaluate expression file and evaluate expression solution file. So go down here. Okay. So we're going to take our, well, actually, no, we can do something before. We can start to write each problem because no matter what type of problem, we're going to have a number for the problem. So let's do my evaluate expressions file and let's write. And let's do an F string, let's do a problem, and we'll pass in the problem number, which comes from this uh, for loop. Um, and we'll also do that for the solutions file. Uh, so let's do that for the evaluate expression solution file. And we'll write, uh, in case you're wondering what autocomplete is, it's just a package called auto autocomplete. Uh, okay, so, and for both of these, I wanna format it with a slash in, slash in, a slash in, slash n and i want to make both of these actual in org mode uh, second level headings so i'm going to do a star star in front there and a star star in front of there okay um actually yeah i don't know We'll, we'll think about it. I might want to just put them in bold. We'll see. We'll see how it looks. All right. So uh, so if the type of problem equals one, well, that's the first type of problem, which is like 4x plus 3y or whatever number times x plus whatever number times y. We want to evaluate that. So we're going to take our evaluate expressions file, and we're going to write uh, an f string, and we're going to say... Um, uh, what is the value of the expression? And let me just do a slash here for formatting. Um, what is the value of the expression when uh, or no, actually, let's have the expression. So we'll have in parentheses, we'll have coefficient. No, we won't have parentheses. I lied. That's the next step problem. So coefficient underscore one times x plus this is going to be coefficient underscore two times y when x equals I want to pass in the x value and y equals pass in the y value and we'll just have a question mark here and then a slash n slash n for formatting and um uh, for each of these at the end, um, we're going to have to just do a slash, but we can do that after these if elif statements. So just like a line slash with the three dash dashes, I'll show you that in a minute. I'm also going to write the solution here because uh, the solution does depend on the type of problem. So 
uh, we're going to do an F string. We'll say solution and just equals. That's all we need. And then new problem. And let's just go up and see. We've got uh, solve type one. Okay. So <clears throat> we're going to do dot solve type one. And we want to have our opening and closing parentheses there. All right. And so that's good. Um, now I'm going to go back and I'm going to do an elif statement. And I'm going to say if type of problem, if that equals two. And I don't know why Emacs does that, but it does. Um, it should be indented with the if statement. So uh, we're going to do, now we're going to write evaluate expressions, just the file. Um, again, this is a different type of problem. So we're going to say, what is the value of the expression? I guess I could copy the first line here because it's always going to be the same. Um, now we're going to do the fraction times X plus just Y. So now I would do the parentheses. So I'm going to do cof underscore one and then a slash for my fraction and then pass in cof underscore two. Now, I, I suppose you could get fancy and format this so it's superscript and subscript in org mode. I'm not going to do that for this video, but feel free. Um, all right. And then that's going to be times X plus Y uh, when X equals, I have to pass in the X underscore value and Y equals pass in the Y underscore value. Okay. Uh, question mark a slash n slash n. We also want to include the solution. Uh, so we're going to write another F string. The solution is going to equal uh, a new underscore problem with the sol type two method. Okay. And that's good for that one. All right. Now we're going to do another LF statement. So LF uh, type of problem, if that equals three, well now, and again, it's doing the weird little indenting, one, two, three, four. Okay, if anyone has a solution to that, please let me know. Um, all right, uh, so now we, we're doing a type of problem where it's like X plus some fraction times Y, okay? So we're gonna take our evaluate expressions file and we're going to write an F string, again, what is the value of the expression? Uh, slash move down. Um, we're going to do X plus now, uh, whoops, we'll do parentheses first. Pass in cof underscore one slash uh, cof underscore two times Y when X equals uh, I'm going to pass this in X underscore value and Y equals Y underscore value. Okay. Question mark. And then a slash N slash N just for formatting. Okay. Again, we also want to write to our solutions file. Uh, so we're going to write F string and then the solution is going to equal new problem with the sol type three method. We always have to put our parentheses at the end of that. Um, for these, I notice I'm not formatting with a slash n slash n. I do want to do that. So let me correct that slash n slash n and slash n slash n. Okay. Finally, uh, the last thing we have to do, the only other number that can be chosen is four. So we don't have to do LF. We're just going to do else. And again, it's going to do the odd indenting. I'm just going to fix that. All right. Uh, we're going to take our evaluate expressions file and we're going to write uh, an F string to that. Uh, what is the value of the expression? And then do a slash here. Move down. Um, and this is going to be a full fraction. So I'm going to do parentheses. We'll do cof underscore one slash and then cof underscore two times x plus uh, another parentheses pass in cof underscore three slash uh, then cof underscore four uh, times y when 
I don't think I need a comma. When x equals x underscore value and y equals y underscore value. Okay. Question mark slash n slash n. Uh, we want to also write our solution. So we're going to take the evaluate uh, expression solution file and write uh, an F string and we'll have solution equals, we'll take the new problem with the sol type for method and include a uh, slash n slash n there. Okay. So now we're out of our if, elif, else statement. Um, so now what we can do is just to end off the problem, we can write uh, three dashes. So we're going to take the evaluate expressions file and we're going to write, doesn't need to be an F string, just dash, dash, dash. It's like markdown, that'll make a little line and then a slash n slash n. And we're going to do that again for the evaluate uh, expression solution file, and we're going to write um, the dash 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 slash n slash n, um, and then we'll take the evaluate uh, expressions file, and we'll close it. And whoops, I don't want to do that. And we'll take the evaluate expression solution file and we'll close that. Okay. And then we'll save our file. And I did that with control X, control S. Okay. And now what I can do is I can um, open up a terminal and run this program and we'll see if we have any errors. I might have had, you know, I'm doing this. It's not planned, it's just recording it. All right. So I'm going to do a term and, uh, I know this is small, so we'll do Python 3 evaluate underscore expressions dot pi. And there's no such file. Uh, what did I type? Try that again. Python 3. And let's just paste it in. That's weird. I'm sure I missed something that you guys are, you didn't spell this. Uh, I didn't copy, of course. Oh, it's, I'm in Emacs. Okay, it ran, no errors. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so you see it created those org files. Um, let's just check out one of those org files. So I'm going to exit out of this. Uh, I'm going to go back to Dear Ed and we'll, we'll jack up the font again. I'll hit G to see the new files that were created. Um, let's go first take a look at this one. And um, let's just do Control X, Control Shift Plus to get that a little bit larger for you. Okay. so. Uh, you know, we're seeing we're coming up with the problems and it's formatted pretty decently here. Um, now I'm going to check these problems at a later point. I'll make sure they're fine and I'll put it up on teacher pay teachers. Um, but, you know, assuming the logic is fine, now we want to um, make this, um, we want to make this document so we can style it as maybe a website or we can, um, you know, style it as a website and then use the method that you may have seen in my previous video where we just use our browser to create the PDF for us. Okay. So let's go back to the top here and I want to add a few things at the top of this file. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to, I'm going to add an options. Okay. And I want this in caps. So I'm going to say options. Okay. And first thing I want is no table of contents. So I'm going to do TOC nil. I also don't want numbering. So I'm going to do num nil. Okay. So those are my options. I also probably want a title um, for this. 
So let's title it. And you notice my theme here. Now, different themes in Emacs will style this differently. I kind of like the material light theme for org mode. It styles, you notice how it's styled prop, the headings. Uh, that's kind of cool. It styles the title a little bit bigger. It's like, oh, that's important. All right. So let's call this 100 evaluate. Oops, I have caps locks on. Evaluate expressions. Uh, oh, and did you know that you can do cap locks on a Chromebook by switching between that with the alt and the search key. All right, so 100 evaluate expressions uh, with two variables, problems. Let me move this out of the way. The two variables, problems, okay? All right, so that's my title. All right, so now let's also, of course, I wanna include the author. Uh, See, saying that's important to Timothy Unker. Okay. Uh, and let's save it. Okay. And all right. So now without adding a bootstrap styling, I'm going to show you what this looks like as HTML. All right. So I'm going to do control C, control E. That's going to bring up my publishing options. And we'll see that I want to export it to HTML. And I also want to open it. So I'm going to type H. Okay, and this is going to open it. And you notice this is a website without any styling. And if we scroll all the way down, you see the author created. I could validate it, but it's going to give me an error because this is on my local machine. Um, but, you know, so this is without any styling. But let's add some styling. So I'm going to go here and just look up Bootstrap 5. And I'm going to go here to the introduction to the get started and I'm gonna copy this, okay? Now, some tutorials on org, org mode will show you with a setup file. I'm just gonna include the actual um, CSS in the HTML head, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I am going to do, let's see, I think it's uh, plus uh, HTML underscore head, okay? And then I'm just gonna paste that in. Okay, so I pasted in that link. So that should appear in the head of my document. Now I'm going to save and I'm going to purge the previous stuff by control C, control C. Uh, maybe not, did nothing useful. All right, uh, let me do control X. No, nah, anyways, uh, control X, control S, save it. All right, and then control C, control E, H O. Oh. Okay, and we came up with an error. Let's see what my error is. <laughs> of course. Um, let's go to the end of this. Uh, let's see. Let me just search HTML head uh, org mode. Make sure I did that cor correctly. HTML head underscore head. Um, hmm. All right, let me go to Dear Ed here, and let me just uh, get rid of this HTML file. That may be part of the problem. Uh, let me go back to the org here, okay, and let's kill that line. Okay, so now, yeah. All right, so I don't know, maybe it's because we already had the HTML file in there. Um, but anyway, so now you'll see this is styled differently than the previous document, which was uh, styled with no styling. So you see it has some bootstrap styling. But I want to add a couple other things. Uh, if you know what that error was from, I think it was because we didn't delete the HTML file. Um, okay, so let's do plus um, HTML head and let's include a couple other styles. So we're gonna have, uh, what's this little case here? So we're gonna have a style here 
And we're going to say the body, and we're going to say max width, uh, let's do 800 pixels, margin left, auto, margin right, auto, and let's just include those styles there, okay? And we'll save it, um, and then we'll go to Dear Ed here, and we'll make sure to delete it. And uh, I'm going to delete that. And I delete it by just going over it, pressing D, and then pressing X. And they'll say, do you want to delete it? I say yes. OK, so in case you're wondering, uh, let's go here. All right. Now let's do Control-C, Control-E, H-O. And you'll see now that the document is centered, OK? Um, Cool. All right. So now you've got it styled with bootstrap, bootstrap. You've got it centered. Okay. So what else could we do here? We could go outside of here. We could have our name and our date. Okay. And control X, control S. Uh, go back to here. Let's delete this. Um, I'm pressing G just to update this. So D to delete X to really delete, and then yes. Okay, go back to the org mode here. Uh, control X, Control S, just make sure it's saved. Control C, Control E, uh, H, O. Okay, uh, that didn't come out so great. So we might have to work on the name and the date, but you get the point. Now, let's, um, actually, let's go back and see if we can fix that. Uh, formatting a little bit. Um, Let's just do three dashes and dash, dash. Uh, let's do that. Uh, shoot. Okay. Uh, that's not going to do it. Um, yeah. Let's do three dashes there and see how that comes out for us. Delete that. Control X, Control S, Alt X. Dear Ed, uh, update that. Uh, let's delete that. Okay, let's go back here. All right, now um, Control C, Control E, H O. Ah, we're still getting that. All right, so we're gonna have to work on the styling a little bit that with that um, to get the name and the date right. I think, you know what? I'm a little bit of a stickler for making this right. So let's just delete this. Let's delete this, and they can just write the name and the date. Um, Go to Dear Ed. Let's um, delete the HTML file. Okay, go back. Let's Control C, Control E, H O. All right, so we've got it um, evaluated with Bootstrap. Uh, now, if I wanted to make this into a worksheet, I would right click here and then click Print, and I can click Save as PDF. Now you notice they have these this like kind of local host here, which is kind of something that I don't want. So what I can do is to more settings and I go down here to these header and footer options and watch when I unclick, this stuff's gonna go away. Okay, so I can unclick it. Now I've gotten rid of the header. Now if I clicked it back, you notice I have the header up there with the time, I don't want that. So unclick it uh, and then we can just save it to PDF. Um, you notice it's got that bootstrap style to it versus the regular HTML style. So we can save that, uh, pick a file to save it to, um, you know, that's fine. And I click save and it's saved. Now let's let me close out some of these things and let's talk about if I wanted something else. Okay, so that was bootstrap. Cool. Um, let's take a look at Bulma CSS. If you're still with me, I hope you are. Um, so we're going to go here to Bulma. Uh, we learned a little bit about getting started with the framework too as well. Uh, so we'll go to Get Started Overview and go down here. And let's go to Start. Okay. And it's going to give us a link to a CDN, which we could use for this. So we'll do the HTML link. Okay. And we'll just copy that. Cool. All right, we'll go back to this file here. And I am just going to go to the beginning of this and kill this line with Control K. Uh, and then I'll do plus and just do HTML 
HTML underscore head, whoops, HTML. I definitely have not had my caffeine. Okay, uh, turn off the cap locks, control Y, let's paste in. So we pasted in, uh, let's make sure I didn't, oh no, I pasted in the bootstrap again. Let me go to the beginning here. Let me get rid of this. Uh, oh yeah, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to highlight this, go to the end here. Didn't quite get in my clipboard. Let's copy that again, copy. Uh, control Y. Okay, so now I've got my Bulma link, and I can tell it's the Bulma link. It's a lot shorter. So Control X, Control S, Control C, Control C. Uh, okay, so now it's ref it's refreshing the local setup. Okay, I don't know why it wasn't doing that before. Uh, Alt X, go to Dear Ed here, and let's uh, delete this. Okay, and all right, so now we're going to go Control C, Control E, uh, H O. And notice that the, the styling is quite different than Bootstrap. Uh, that's because Bulma is different than Bootstrap, okay? So um, that's what we could do with Bulma. We can also go to Materialize. Uh, and you can do this with anything. You can do it with Minima, CSS, I think is one. There's a bunch of other ones, um, whatever you like. So let's go to Get Started. I'll just show you this one final example. Uh, we can also go and get the CDN. So it's gonna give us a link to CDN.js. Uh, I'm going to go to and copy the link tag. And I might need to do this again because, again, I'm going to control K to kill this line. And let's, let me just uh, increase the size here. Okay. All right. Uh, so I want to do hashtag plus um, and then HTML head. Okay. Uh, and let me copy this again because I just killed something. So that's going to put that in the clipboard. So anyways, control Y. Um, this is longer. So let me just go to the beginning here. Yeah, this is the CDN. You can see the CDN JS Cloud Fair materialize. Okay, so we've got that style sheet coming in. Control X, control S, control C, control C. Refresh the local setup. Go to Dear Ed. Oops, I want to go down the caps. Dear Ed. Uh, and get rid of the HTML. All right, go back to the org file. And now what I want to do is uh, control C, control E, H, O. And okay, so now this is materialized, which is quite a bit different. Now there might be one that you prefer or one that's totally different than these, or you can create your own style sheet, whatever you want to do. Um, so this is, this is different. If I, you know, went to print this, take a look at it. You notice that the problems are a lot bigger. I like Bootstrap a little bit better. We get more problems on one page. This would be a lot more pages. Um, I'm not going to print this one, but it's just showing you how you can bring in those uh, style sheets that are already on the web. You don't have to create your own style sheet here. Um, and you could use this if you're a math teacher wanting to create a worksheet. If you're someone writing to wanting to write a blog in org mode, uh, it's very easy to do. You don't have to write out all the HTML. Uh, you know, I'm a professional web developer uh, as my job, but I still, if I'm going to write a blog, which I am thinking about doing, that's going to be a project coming up, um, I might do it in org mode because it's just easier and I want to get out the information. I don't want all the bells and whistles for my blog. I just want some information on coding, that kind of thing, and math. Um, and I want to do it quickly and easily. And org mode is one efficient way to do it. I may look again at Markdown and doing some of this stuff and getting the styles into Markdown as well if you're a Vim or NeoVim user. So don't feel like I'm just going to focus on Emacs. But um, yeah. So anyways, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications as it really helps the channel grow. Uh, you can also go to GitHub. I'll, I will include a link. Sometimes I don't do it the same day. A link to GitHub. Uh, you could follow me there. I may post the code for this on GitHub. Um, you know, give me a star there. That's a way to support me. Or uh, I will put these worksheets up on Teacher Pay Teachers once I check them. And you know, 100 problems for a dollar. If you want to support me in that way, that'd be greatly appreciated. Um, and just watching the video is support enough. So I thank you for that. And I hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day.